Get peace of mind with the RV Advisor's extended warranty for as low as $14 per month. Visit thervadvisor.com today. This is the RV Advisor Podcast with your host, Tom Alexander. Get all the latest information, trends, advice from experts, stories from the road, and more in the world of recreational vehicles. Now, here's Tom. Hi, everyone. Welcome to the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. Today, I'm joined by Bob Diamor. Bob is an uh, engineer by trade, but uh, a consultant now with Quest Technology. And uh, welcome, Bob. How are you? Great. Thank you. Appreciate well, I appreciate you coming on. Yeah, I appreciate you coming on. You know, you're. We were talking before we, uh, before we uh, started here on the podcast, and and you shared something with me which I think is a great story and kind of a cool way to have sort of joined the Quest team. Uh, the squeaky wheel gets the grease, right? I guess you could say. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'm a, I'm a, it all went down. Yeah, I'm a system tester, uh, system hardware, software tester by trade. Been doing it for 45 years, so. Quality assurance is kind of my middle name. Uh, so what happened was, is uh, my wife and I bought a, a motorized unit back in 2013. Mm -hmm. And the unit came equipped with um, a mechanical switch to switch the TV inputs. And um, it did standard definition video, and it did over the air signals and cable signals. And it distributed it throughout the coach. Thought it was a great idea. The problem was, is that these mechanical switches were great back in the day. They were pretty much a de facto standard. And um, they, were, they were great for R, RF and uh, for video signals back in the day. But when the digital revolution came and HD video came along and the US went to digital over the air broadcasts, uh, they didn't always work. And it depended on your location. It depended on the length of the cable, uh, how many connectors and splitters you had. So um, I was blaming my antenna, bought a brand new expensive antenna and still had the same problems. So I investigated. Uh, I contacted the two manufacturers that made the mechanical switches that the um, RV manufacturer, Numar, had installed at that time. Mm -hmm. And only one of them was willing to look into uh, actually improving the product to keep up with the technology uh, demands of the times. Huh. So it was, uh, it was an interesting, marriage, I basically uh, complained to them and they were only too willing to listen. And instead of just saying, hey, your product stinks, uh, I said, hey, your product is great. It's a great idea and it works under some conditions, but it can be better. And if you're willing, I can help you get there. I can help you uh, understand uh, the RV and what's required and what would be required to fix this. And they were only too willing to jump on board. And that's that was the start of a wonderful relationship. Well, that's great because, you know, a company that is um, humble enough, you know, to, to sort of accept, hey, you know what, we can do better. We're, we, we work hard, we're trying, but nobody's perfect. Let's see what we can do to improve it. And suddenly Bob Diamor comes along and now, you know, things are, are trending in a, you know, everybody's on the same path. That's terrific. Yeah, it was constructive criticism instead yeah. of just, you know, trashing a product uh, right. and moving on. Uh, you know, it was a matter of, hey, you know, I can help you. I can help you fix this if you're willing to listen. And they were. So it was, yeah. uh, no, it was great. And it was a breath of fresh air. <laughs> I'll bet it was. You know, better than leaving a trail of scorched earth behind you and like, you know, <laughs> yeah, not, sure. not, not being able to find you after that, you know. For sure. Bob Diamor, well, that's not his real name. <laughs> <laughs> So, so you know, your background's interesting. It's it's uh, it's um, uh, obviously a, a engineering. Um, tell us a little bit about you know, like was that something you were interested in as as a young man or even a child or you know what what how how did, how did you fall into that? I fell into that from the uh, United States Air Force. They directed me uh, into that uh, into that field by uh, basically I, I, when I joined, I had three. Um, three possible things that I wanted to do. And they gave me a fourth. <laughs> so it said, this is where we need you. So wow. uh, it was an aircraft electronics. Um, I was an aircraft electronics technician uh, that uh, basically worked on the um, navigation systems and the radar systems. So I started off as a, an electronics tech 
Yeah. And when I got out, I joined a Concurrent Computer Corporation, which was a super, uh, super mini computer ma uh, maker here in New Jersey, and worked for them for 17 years. So um, it was basically my service background that got me involved in it. And from there on, it was mainly uh, we put, you put out a product and we try to break it before the customer does. So that, right. that was my job. My job was to break things. All right. Hey, that's not a bad, that's not a bad gig. No, not at all. Break things for a living. That's, that's yeah. all right. Um, this is, this is great. I mean, uh, you know, I, I find it interesting when people have, you know, really sort of, you know, unusual jobs um, that they do and things that, that, you know, maybe someone like myself or the average layperson may not think about that. Yeah. Hey, you know what? There's somebody that needs to do that so that the product can improve. Right, um, right. You, yeah, know, the, uh, you know, a lot of times, uh, you know, engineers and, and developers are given spe specifications and requirements mm -hmm. and they do the best they can to implement them, but they're not really looking at it from the real world perspective, from the, uh, from the user perspective. And, and my job as a quality assurance engineer was always to put myself in the shoes of the end user, to somebody, somebody that was going to actually have to push the buttons and make the thing work. And uh, you know, that's, that's, that's where I came in, trying to test that from that point of view and to make the engineers understand that, yeah, what you did was great, but you know, we have to tweak it a little bit to make it easier to understand or make it, make it work the way people expect it to work. How hard is it? You know, that's interesting because let me ask you, um, how hard is it to, to take yourself and your knowledge and theory and everything you've done over years and deep understanding of the, ma the machinery and, and everything, to take yourself out of that and put yourself in the place of a lay person and say, well, they're not going to think of doing A, a B, and C. They're only going to be thinking of doing D. How, you know, how hard yeah. is it to imagine that? For me, it's not. And that's probably why I've done it for so long. Um, I, I, it just uh, it just came naturally for me to always think of how how is this going to be perceived by the people that we are we are marketing it to or that we're going to put it in the hands of uh, and and I, th I think that's something that always came natural to me. Uh, so uh, some people have a, a hard time doing that because they can't take themselves out of that technical role or that engineering role. They can. They can look at a really elegant way of solving a problem, but it only makes the problem worse for the end user because they don't care about elegant. They want ease of use. Yeah. You know, they want it to. They want to push a button and have it do what they expect it to do. They don't want to push five buttons to make it do it. You know, that kind of a thing. So it's a. Uh, you, you have to be somewhat, um, uh, you know, in tune with it. And and it was a natural choice for me with the RV because my wife and I have been campers and RVers for, for many years. So, uh, you know, we've gone from tent camping to towable trailers to fifth wheel trailers to uh, now class A motorhomes. So we've kind of graduated up the chain mm -hmm. and we understand RVing and we know what it is uh, for us to be out on the road, you know, traveling with these things. Yeah. So what we, what we find is, is that a lot of the manufacturers tend to um, market to the high-end users, and they're the ones that live in their in their RVs. They're they're the ones that want the same um, they want the same amenities that they have in their home. Yeah, but, right. The full timers, sure. Yeah, and and yeah. you know, technology has made that possible. Uh, you know, you you've got uh, streaming video, you got HD uh, video, you have uh, satellite uh, TV, you have all of those things, but it only really works for people who live in them because you need to spend time in it. It takes time to set them up. It takes time to find campgrounds that have um, strong Wi-Fi to, that it's capable of doing streaming. Most campgrounds nowadays have Wi-Fi, yeah. but they throttle it. They restrict the bandwidth so that everybody has a chance to connect and get their email. Right. But it doesn't allow the bandwidth that streaming video would require. So, you, you always have to go to the same place to know that those services are available for you, that you have a clear line of sight to the satellites. If you're a recreational camper, 
you're not worried about those things. You're picking a campsite based on your, your outdoor activities. You want to kayak, you want to hike, you want a bicycle, you want to you know, take your motorcycle, uh, your ATV. That's what you're picking your campground and your campsite and your location by. And my wife and I and my family, uh, we've, always, we've always believed that there are wheels on an RV, towable and motorized, for a reason. Yeah. To move them. Yeah. Just to travel, to go that's, places, to see that's things. Right. That's so right. So you never know what you're going to end up with. And, and I had a satellite uh, receiver for many years in, in our first diesel uh, pusher. And I could rarely use it because the campsites that we had were, were up in the mountains and they didn't have a clear line of sight to the, uh, to the satellite. So I carried the thing around with me and was never able to use it. <laughs> so there are times when it just doesn't pay. Yeah. So you have to think about those RVers, the recreational campers, instead of just those that live in them. Wow, that's that is that's a, a lot to think about and a lot to consider. But it sounds like the right man is uh, doing the job. <laughs> our our guest is Bob Diamore, uh, and he is from Quest Technology. We're going to learn a little bit more about uh, what Bob does and what's coming up uh, down the line here in uh, 2021, and we'll do that right after this break. This is the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. Back in a moment. Now these words. The RVACA is a charitable organization protecting the rights of the RV owners. We'll work with dealers and manufacturers to ensure quality control is in place prior to delivery of an RV. Additionally, the RVACA provides assistance to disaster relief victims. Visit RVACA.org. We are back on the RV Advisor Podcast. I'm Tom Alexander. My guest is a, a consultant for Quest Technology. It's Bob D. Amore. And uh, we've been talking about a lot of really interesting stuff, uh, not only with Bob's uh, background, but also uh, really what it takes to um, sort of look into the crystal ball, if you will, uh, uh, you know, who, who's, you know, the final user, the, 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 the person that's going to, the person that is going to be using this product that, is not an engineer, but is, you know, Mr. and Mrs. Front Porch like you and me and, and wants to, an easy way to kind of just uh, uh, figure it out, you know, uh, and, and get the end result and be successful with it. But, you know, there's obviously, um, that's not all you do, Bob. I mean, you have to look at other things. And I, first, I have to ask you, this last year has been a challenge for every single person on the planet. Um, in varying degrees, um, you know, when, when, when it started to happen, first of all, what was the thinking going on there at the company? And also, how, how, how was the pivot? You know, like you said, okay, you know what? Here's, here's, here's a new direction or whatever it was. Yeah. What did you guys talk about? Oh, yeah. Well, well, they say timing is everything, and, yeah. and timing was definitely against us when we worked uh, diligently with the, uh, uh, some contacts at some major uh, RV manufacturers who supplied us with input, said, look, mm -hmm. this is what we need. This is what we're doing. Mm -hmm. um, they all thought that fixing a 30-year-old problem with uh, sig you know, antenna signals was a great idea. But they also knew that they were trying to distribute HD video within their coaches. So that was something new. And they were using two different methods for that. Some of them were using HDMI cables and HDMI switch boxes. And others were using Cat5, Cat6 cable. And there's reasons for both of them. Uh, but HDMI, you can buy off the shelf. It's pre-wired. Uh, pretty much everybody knows how to plug and play with that stuff. Mm -hmm. Problem with it is it's, it's not forgiving. It's not a forgiving cable for a manufacturer or an installer uh, because it's it's just not robust. There's a lot of pins. There's 19 pins in the HDMI connector and there's four different configurations of them. Uh, you have eight pins in Cat5. Eight pins and it's standard. It's a LAN cable. The same cable that you and I are using right now on our computers, our IP telephones, anything that's IP LAN, you know, local area network is is basically what the Cat5, K, uh, Cat6 cables are all about. Right. So they're much more forgiving uh, for installation and repair, especially for repair. Mm -hmm. If a 
HDMI connector goes bad, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a bared effect. Most uh, average person can't do it. Uh, but a Cat5, there's tools for that. I mean, you can swap it, uh, an RJ connector onto a Cat5 cable in, in a matter of seconds. And that's what you need in the factories. That's what you need in the service centers. So having that, having said that, we had the, um, the problem of solving the over-the-air signals. And it took a while to do that, to do it right. But when we got it, that was the heart and soul of the video control center by Quest. It was, it was, it's the same, uh, it's the same heart and soul that is in the HDMI and the Cat5 version. So we have two products that support both of the, uh, the cabling for HD and it replaces multiple splitters that the manufacturers were using and it replaces the separate switch box that they were using to distribute the HD video. So it used to be they used to use the coax cable to transmit standard definition, but that went out with standard definition TV. So the coax is really there to, to uh, only send the over the air TV signals and the cable campground cable signals to the televisions. Everything else is HDMI now. So we worked all that out, got the product going. We were ready to rip. We had uh, engineering samples ready to get in the hands of the manufacturers that gave us the input, and then COVID hit. Everything stopped. Everything came to a halt, including our factory who was building the product and engineering the product. So they were all sent home. Um, the uh, manufacturing facilities for the RVs and the, and the sales centers all shut. So yeah, timing was really bad on that. Yeah. So um, we have production, pre-production samples ready to go again. And the manufacturers are starting to come out of it, but they're proceeding very cautiously and very slowly right now. And a lot of them, again, like I had mentioned earlier, seem to be focused on things like streaming video and satellite for HD when they should be thinking of the recreational camper because there is a TV antenna and a cable input on every single RV, be it towable, okay, be it towable or motorized. That is what's on every single RV. They may not all have HD. They may not all have um, satellite. They may or may not have a satellite dish antenna on there or even want to have the uh, external antenna, but they all come equipped with an antenna, yeah. a cable input. So you have TV reception right there. But if you screw it up by adding all of these inline splitters, which introduce what they call attenuation and insertion loss, the, the signal degrades the further it goes in the coach. And the bigger the coach, the more cabling, the longer the cables, the worse the signal gets at the far end. Yeah. The v video control center solves all that. It amplifies the signal, it overcomes the insertion loss, and it delivers a uniform, stable uh, signal to every television location. And it has the ability to switch an HD device, uh, actually two devices, and send them to any of the TV locations in the coach as well. So it's, it's kind of a double punch. But again, it was, a, it was a timing thing. And we're trying to get the RV manufacturers, oh, and the RV parts um, online and brick and mortar stores too. We'd, we'd like them to pick up on this for aftermarket sales. Yeah. But so it can be retrofitted. I did it in two of them. I did it in two class A motorhomes that I owned. Yeah. So, yeah. you know, we're trying to make them understand that you, you know, that this is a viable product it solves a problem that goes way back before digital TV. Uh, you know, even analog TV was affected by this. It just wasn't affected as bad because weak analog TV signals simply got a little snowy. They get a little fuzzy. Right. But digital, what do you get? You get loss of audio, you get freeze frame, you get tiling, you have all of those ugly things that happen with a yeah. digital signal that doesn't happen with analog. So it's not as forgiving. Yeah, the, the tiling in particular, like if you're watching a ball game or something and you get that whole tiling, it looks oh. it, it looks like a Leroy Neiman painting all of a yeah. sudden. You know, it just, it's really... <laughs> yeah, that's a good way. I don't, 
<laughs> I don't know if everybody knows who Lee Rodriguez You were a Neiman painting at that time. You want to see the ball game. So, yeah, yeah, exactly. It's, it's just like, wow, what, what just happened there? Right. Um, you know, it's funny because I think like where you are with technology, and I, I dial back to my youth and in the days of trying to pull signals up from other big cities, uh, in, in, uh, you know, on your aerial, you know, and you right, would, yep. and, and I would, you know, with my friends and I would put like fishing wire on the back of the TV and run a, 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 a clothes hanger out the window. <laughs> yep, <laughs> Anything yep. we could rig. Tin to foil, yeah, you name it. And, yeah. and you know, it, it, it sort of kind of worked sometimes if you were yeah. lucky. Yeah, um, well, you almost yeah. had to do that with the uh, with the RVs as well. It just, yeah. uh, it, you know, the, the antennas were rotational, so they were very directional. So you yeah. had to get them right in that sweet spot. Right. And, and with with analog TV, it was like, well, I know this channel is in this area. Yeah. I know channel three is in the Philadelphia area. So right. I, if I point it in the direction, I can find it. With digital, it doesn't work that way. The yeah. digital signals are very fragmented. You now could use a phone app to find them. Yeah. And there are automatic TV signal, uh, uh, I'm sorry, sensing uh, antenna systems that will find them for you. Yeah. Like the uh, WineGuard Razor will actually zero in on it. So it, it rotates like a dish in a dome and yeah. it actually will find the strongest signals for you. But it's not like the thing where you used to be able to watch the TV and go, yeah, there it is. There it is. Stop, yeah. stop, go back. <laughs> Take the tinfoil back in the other direction. Yeah. You can't do that anymore. <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Not you know, with digital. What are you using there, buddy? Well, Reynolds Wrap is what I'm using. It's uh, <laughs> <laughs> unbelievable. You know, technology, yeah. technology by aluminum foil. Yeah. Um, pretty, pretty interesting. Well, listen, Bob, this this has been a lot of fun. I, I've enjoyed talking with you. Love to have you on again. Uh, it, it's it's very interesting what you do. Why don't you let folks know where they can go to learn more about not only what you do but what Quest does. Oh yeah, uh, well you can go to uh, you know Quest, uh, Quest Quest Technologies website, and um, you can um, look at all. I mean, they have a, a wide range, uh, a wide array of products, yeah. uh, all sorts of connectivity products and cables and things uh, for business and home use. But the uh, the RV products uh, you can find there as well, and it's the um, Video Control Center, and again, it's the uh, Quest QS. Uh, 6000 HD yeah. and it's the QS uh, 6500 uh, C-6 six, which is the uh, 5 slash uh, 6 I should say which is the Cat 5 version. Yeah. Those are the two. So on the Quest Technology website. Yeah I'm looking at the, the, the URL right now it's Quest Technology INTL that's international INTL yeah. Quest Technology INTL dot com and uh, products marketing resources uh, everything you need to know about everything that uh, Quest does and has. And uh, yeah, if you contact them, we'll be happy to, uh, yeah. I think you can from, from the website, download the product brochures, but we can also send them by email if you contact the, uh, the company directly. Right. Uh, so we do have sales, uh, sales brochures that go into the, uh, uh, all of the features of both and you know, show how they can be connected. So um, you might find a fit for them yourself. Uh, like I said, for aftermarket, if your coach does not have, uh, is not wired for HD, you can mm -hmm. pretty much do it yourself um, if, if, if you're handy. Uh, if you have a trailer, it's really easy. If you have a motorhome, it's a little bit more challenging. But uh, you can run cables now uh, on, on, on the exterior along uh, walls and, and ceilings and floors using a, a wire mold type of a, a raceway to conceal the wires. So you can actually wire your coach for HD if you don't have it now. But the big thing that, it's, that it fixes is the over the air and cable. So you at least have that corrected. And that's a problem that's been around for many years. Yeah, well, if communication is important to you, and I know for a lot of people it is, whether it's uh, shows they wanna watch or uh, computer connectivity or whatever it is, Quest is, uh, Quest is the place to go. Quest Technology International. And they, again, the website is questtechnologyintl.com. And uh, you can find everything you need to know right there. Bob Diamore, consultant for Quest Technology, has been our guest. Bob, thank you so much. Really appreciate it. Thank you for having me. I appreciate it. It's been, uh, it's been fun talking with you. We'll have to Likewise. do it again. Well, yeah, we'll, we'd love to have you on again. 
This is the RV Advisor Podcast, back in just a moment. RV owners and those thinking about owning want to maximize the fun and minimize the hassle of buying an RV you need GPS it's Gigi's personal service our $350 package gets you me the expert advice and a host of outstanding services visit the rvadvisor.com Hi, and welcome back to the RV Advisor Podcast. Tom Alexander with you. And of course, I am joined by our guest coordinator. It is Neve Carizaco. Hey, Neve. Hi, Tom. How are you doing? <laughs> I'm doing great. Thanks. And uh, you're, you're back in your usual location in a car oh somewhere yeah. in South Florida. Yeah, it's just, it's the quietest place for me to come and try yeah. to record. <laughs> it's, it's just, it's the predictable unpredictability because we know odds are you'll be in a car, but we just don't know where, you know? Exactly. You know, I actually just got gas. So Did you? I had, yeah. So I said, let me just pull in here because if I get home and take this, then Cole will see my car and I won't be able to shoot because he'll be screaming. So. Ah, okay. Gotcha. Now in yeah. Ireland, yeah. It's, it's petrol, right? What yes, do do? um, we do call it petrol. Yes, so when I go home and say gas, they make fun of me. <laughs> there you go. Okay, well, and I think if somebody said petrol here, they'd kind of look at you oddly, right? They probably wouldn't even know what it is. Yeah. 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 There you go. Well, you know, we have some some uh, big news. Obviously, we uh, yes. we have launched our uh, social media platform. Uh, yes, American. super excited. Pretty, pretty jacked up. I mean, we're just kind of getting started. I was talking with Gigi earlier today, and it's sort of the test run. The uh, mm -hmm. I, I refer to it as rounding the clubhouse turn and coming to the finish line because we're really, yes. I mean, it's out there, but it's, it's uh, you know, we, we need uh, your help, not you specifically, but the, you, the viewer, the listener. And um, for sure. And so very, we're, very we're important. Yeah, we're developing it. So what's what's the latest? Well, basically, we want to like we were saying like a few podcasts ago, um, it is very much a similar um, model, we'll say the base of a model for social media. Um, the mm -hmm. difference is with this, obviously, we are targeting um, a very select audience, which is travelers or veers, um, people that are on the road, va van life people. Um, that type of audience we're trying to make it a niche a niche thing where it's a go-to for everyone for all your travel tips tricks needs and just basically build a community off of that um you're able to upload photos like make a profile um you know add in information on what you drive where you're from where you're going um you know just just basically um trying to expand off of that so we've we, we've kept it pretty um i don't want don't want to say normal but you know common common areas that you'd find on social media we've we've kept the same kind of model on ours um mm -hmm. and we are just heavily relying on our members and followers and listeners to let us know what they would find beneficial for us to add to the site it's going to be ever changing until it's perfect um as far as you know do they want um a section on adding videos or do they want a poll section whatever they may want to see um we will make it happen we're here to listen to them and make it um as user friendly and as fun as possible so yeah super excited it's actually up i feel like it's going to be a huge success um but yeah it, it's very important for our listeners and followers to let us know what they would like to see yeah absolutely please please do check it out and uh let us know uh, how yep. we can always you know it's, it's it's an evolution we're always trying to you know improve on it and build it and and with your yeah. help we we will so yeah. uh also of course we always let folks know if they want to come on to the podcast right here oh with us yes uh, please you know reach out to neve and neve you can give them your uh your email address yeah reach out to me via any of the social media accounts i manage the social media accounts along with the some other lovely people on our team, but um, I keep an eye on the messages there. Um, so the Orvi advisor for Twitter, Instagram, Facebook, 
You can even um, find me on YouTube. I monitor that too. Um, and, and then my direct email address is ncary at the rvadvisor.com. So between any of them, feel free to reach out at any time. Terrific. That's great. ncary at the rvadvisor.com. Neve, always great to see you. And we will see you again uh, on our very next show. Thanks so much. Of course. Goodbye. All right, everybody, there you go. And uh, we will be back next time with a brand new RV Advisor podcast for Neve Karizako. I'm Tom Alexander. So long, everybody. <laughs>